Welcome to Outtakes. I'm Lori Baker. I'm excited to be doing a whole series of interviews this month featuring nominees for the 2017 Daytime Emmy Awards. To launch the series off, who better than Vincent Irizarry, nominated as Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for his role as Deimos Kyriakos on Days of Our Lives. This is his fourth time being nominated for the Daytime Emmys, and he won the Daytime Emmy for Best Supporting Actor for his role as David Hayward on All My Children in 2009. So here he is talking about this round of the Daytime Emmys, Days of Our Lives, and more. So congratulations for your Daytime Emmy nomination as Outstanding Lead Actor for Deimos Kyriakos and Days of Our Lives. Uh, this is your Thank fourth you. nomination. If you win, yeah. it's going to be your second win. Do you ever get used to this? Uh, no, you don't ever get used to this. I mean, I, unless you're unless you're somebody who's been nominated like 20 times, you know, no, you probably don't get used to it. <laughs> you know, um, it's it's always a it's always a you know really nice pleasant honor um, when your peers select you to be in this category. Um, yeah, I, and I, and I especially considering um, the work that I've uh, had the opportunity to do on the show and that it's recognized and it's, you know, it's a relatively new character and for that to happen, it was really nice. Was it a surprise? Where were you when you found out that you got the nomination? I was, I was at home and I was on a phone call um, that was, I couldn't hang up. Um, I was on, it was a, there was a long call that I had to make and I, I had no, I didn't realize that, the, the announcement was being made at that time or else I may not have done it because I was thinking the three hour difference it was New York where it was being telecast. So I may have not planned to have that phone call at that time, but I was on the call and I couldn't hang up. And all of a sudden my phone kept beeping and beeping. Like all these calls were coming in and tweets were coming in. I was getting notifications about that. And while I was on the phone, I looked at my computer to see what was going on. And I realized I was nominated. I was like, Oh, okay. So, but so that's how I found out. It was, a, it was a nice, it was a nice, pleasant surprise. But I had even Donna was calling me. She called me like three times, and I couldn't pick up the phone because I couldn't hang up on this call that I was making. It was a very important call. So um, yeah, it was just it was crazy. So I finally I was able to do that at some point. Oh, that's a funny story. What scenes did you submit for the Emmy reel? I submitted um, for the Emmy reel. Yeah, because the pre-nom reel was four minutes long, and that one I had I had to select um, portions of several I did, of two shows, um, and I selected the same shows for the for the extended reel, the more scenes from them, and uh, more from those even those scenes that I did select weren't edited down, um, or from beginning or from the beginning or from the end because you were allowed to do that as well for the four minute one. You couldn't cut within the scene and then paste it back together within the scene, but you could cut from either end, and that's what I had to do for the first one. But the second one, it would, the, the the scenes that the shows that I selected from were um, the episode where um, Nicole tells Deimos at the docks that um, that Chloe had been lying to him about the baby, that she was carrying his baby, and then she'd switched the DNA. And at first, he's very excited that the, the realization that he's going to be a father and then he comes to realize that nicole knew about this for two months and didn't tell him that she had lied to him and kept this from him and that's where the conflict happened with us and there was that was led us into a place where he didn't trust her and but it was a that th those are really strong scenes um because it had a real arc um from the beginning to the end and you know and obviously ari is always fantastic in anything that that she does so it was just it was they were really good scenes to, to put up there and then the other ones were um i and it wasn't in the it wasn't in chronological order but those are the first ones i selected the second set of scenes i only took two scenes from this one show where nicole um shows up at chloe's cabin believing that that damos was dead that he had died at the riverbank and that she was the one that was being charged with it because Kate was, was framing her. She shows up at Chloe's cabin and sees me for the first time, realized I'm alive. Um, and the scenes that I selected from that were towards the end of the episode where I'm challenging her to be honest about her feelings for me, that um, I, I let her know that I was very well aware of the fact that she was working for Victor in the beginning to bring me down but I saw a change in her, that I know I was there, I know her, and that she knows damn well that she, her feelings for me changed. And I just want her to be honest with me about her real feelings. Um, 
those were the scenes that I selected for that episode. And then I took one one minute moment from an episode with me playing piano um, when uh, Nicole wakes up after her first night of making love. She wakes up listening to me playing Beethoven's Fur Elise. And there's no dialogue. She wakes up, she comes over to the piano, and I'm playing the piano, and she comes and sits next to me, and then she rests her head on my shoulder while I'm playing. And um, it was just a nice, it, it kind of, the way that I constructed the, the reel was that it took the viewer on a journey with these two characters. You know, that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't fragmented, and even though the the chronology was different from what had aired, a viewer that had, didn't know the show would not know that from this. It worked, and I just wanted it to take for these two characters the journey that they went through together. This is what it was, and at the end, you see them together, and she puts her head on his shoulders after they made love, and so it was kind of cool. You play piano all of your life, and the, the, the character of Deimos played the piano quite a bit in his run. How does it feel to to be able to use that experience as part of this reel and, and as part of this character? Yeah, you know, I I really I wanted to have something from that piano. I I love that element that they introduced into the character and I and it was and I attribute that to Ken Corday. Um he's also a musician. When he found out that I went to Berkeley College of Music and I played piano, he asked me would I be willing to play on the show and I, I said to him, and this is the truth, I haven't played in years. And I, it's just one of those things that over the years I, I had pianos and I, I moved so much. And after a while, getting rid of a piano is really tough. <laughs> you know, it's really tough. Or that I'd leave them in cities with friends and then I would never see them again. And it was like, you know, after a while of doing that, I stopped carrying, getting a piano. I have an electric piano, but it's, you know, it's like put away and I, you know, take it out whenever I want to play it. So, that, I wasn't I wasn't doing that as much, and over the last few years I just have not been playing. So when he asked me that, I said sure I'd be happy to, but you have to give me um, a good amount of notice because don't ask me to like learn a classical waltz, um, you know, within a week. And I said just give me a good amount of time, at least a month before that you know I'm going to be airing. So he did, they did, and the first thing that I played was Claire de Luna, and I had never played it before, so I had to learn that for it. Um, that was the first piece that I played and they gave me a good four or five weeks to learn it, which was great. And then it was like one after the next, after the next. I was doing a lot. I did that one. I did Eric Satie, um, Genipides, like two days later. Then I did the main one that was like the Moonlight Sonata, that whole movement, which was the last act of that episode. It was over five minutes and I had to do the whole thing live. I couldn't, it was not recorded and then played. I did it live on set with the crew and everything, and I, you can't make a mistake because if you do, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It, it worked out great. It worked out great. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was really, for me, it was wonderful to be reinvited back and to reintroduced into that part of my life where I had been playing piano again and to play these beautiful classical pieces. And that's why I really loved that they introduced that into Damon. And I just thought it gave him so much more texture, so much more depth, um, and I, I especially loved in the first year that I was on the show, the way Josh Griffith had um, created the role, that he was really multidimensional and he had so many levels and he, was, he wasn't he was just a villain. He wasn't that at all. Was He was seeking vengeance against his brother for a wrong that had been committed against him and also the memory of the loss of the one woman that he loved and that he had been denied a loving relationship for 30 years with a, with a woman. So, of course, that was his link to his humanity, was the memory of Helena, you know, um, especially in a very harsh, cruel, male-dominated culture as a prison, you know, in a Greek prison, I can only imagine. So, um, so that was important, that he had that. And to bring that element of him having that romantic quality, too, and to be able to play these, these beautiful piano pieces of substance, of depth, that I felt was a reflection of his nature. Um, I loved that. I loved bringing that into it, and I loved, again, having that reintroduced into my life again. So simultaneously, it was great. Yeah. Well, you know, absolutely, I'm thinking about and I'm thinking of the scenes that we saw Damos play the piano, and he would court Nicole by playing the piano. That's what sort of drew her in. Sure. After they make love, we absolutely. see the walls come down and kind of see Damos as vulnerable. And then before he starts to poison people, he's 
<laughs> he's also playing the piano yeah. while people are like dying, you know? So yeah, we see so many different levels yeah. and the piano is so tied into that. That was really cool. Um, that's true. Do you plan that's true. Even with, with, even, yeah. now, even with, even with Kate coming back to the mansion, realizing that he's alive and that she walks right. in and he's playing Chopin, you know, funeral march, you know, um, that's yeah. So in that regard, it was almost a weapon, <laughs> you know, the music for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, but I, but that, but that also adds to the character, not only his intensity, but his, his, his scope and, and his understanding that the music, this, he understands, truly understands the meaning of these pieces, you know, of, the depth mm-hmm. of them, emotional, the emotional depth of them. Um, for him to use that at that moment, I thought it was great. I loved it. I loved it. It was really funny doing that <laughs> that moment with her. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Uh, so do you actually plan to uh, attend the ceremony this year? Yes. Yes, I do. I, I have every intention of doing that. Um, sure, why right. not? I, You know, it's... For me, it's just I always enjoy going because I get to see all the actors and directors and producers I've worked with over 30 years. You know, I've been on five shows now, so I've I've worked with so many people. And it's the one time each year that we all get to come together, you know, and play with each other and then, you know, celebrate with each other and reminisce. And, um, yeah, it's really special. It's really special. So, of course, yes, I will be there. And this year, probably for you, will be uh, a, a real treat because we were going to have the Agnes Nixon tribute at the Emmys that yeah. Susan Lucci will be part of. And that yeah. was a huge part of your career with all my children. So that's going to be exciting, Absolutely. too. I'm so happy to be able to be there to celebrate in that woman. Um, she, I, she's, she's, for me, the true queen of daytime. Um, and I just I feel so honored to have worked under her and to be part of her her creative tapestry and and, uh, and creating that show and and it has such a significant role for so many years on that show with her um i that one of the high points of my whole time on that show was actually doing scenes with her in the hospital um towards the end when we were leaving abc she came on the show and she was a patient in the hospital and i had these beautiful scenes with her and she was just magical on camera. She just had this quality that was so natural. And she just, she's a storyteller, you know, in every, she was a storyteller in every fiber of her being. And just even in between scenes, she'd be telling me these beautiful, wonderful stories about things from her life. And just then when she starts acting, it all comes through too. She was just had this magical presence on camera. And I was transfixed watching her. Um, just, yeah, and I, I adored her. You know, I think the special thing about Agnes, too, and this is what I've been on the show, and she was an icon. You know, I, 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 everybody knew who Agnes Nixon was. But when I first met her, I was working on the set, and um, I was working, doing some scenes, and I saw like, this, this group of people in the background, behind the cameras, quiet in the back and everything. And I finished doing the scenes, and I'm walking by, and, and I just then I noticed that it was Agnes, and it was the first time I'd, I'd seen her. She was there with these group of people that were just visiting the set. She would do that occasionally, not very often, but occasionally people come to, she, as her guests. And she was so so such an unassuming person and presence. She was just so real and genuine, um, honest in her in her nature. And um, when I first met her and was introduced to her. I was like, oh my gosh, every person on this soundstage is here because of this woman. And yet she acted as if she was a visitor to the show. And I'm like, oh, this is her show, you know? <laughs> it was something interesting, and uh-huh. she, but that was her personality, you know? She didn't have any pretense about her at all. And I, uh, it just, I, just was, I was very touched by that when I first met her because she was so genuine. And I, but honestly, and on, even when we go to the Emmys, the great majority of people that are going to be sitting in that, in that um, audience that are part of the industry are here because of her, <laughs> you know, that's the mm-hmm. truth. So, you know, we all owe so much to her. So I'm happy that she's being honored. I, I was lobbying years ago to get her to get the, what is it? The um, presidential um, medal. Uh, I forget what it's called. Kennedy honors, um, I think. Kennedy yeah, honors? the Kennedy honors. I was, yeah, I was lobbying yeah. for that years ago. I was writing to them and, and doing a whole thing because she deserved it, man. I mean, a career like that, 
telling stories for all these years, I, w- I really wanted her to be able to get that before she passed, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Sadly so. Yeah. We, we saw a picture that you had posted uh, this last week on Instagram of you at the poolside reading her book. Have you actually yes. uh, finished her book, her autobiography? How was I know, it? I'm, I'm, I'm about – yeah, I know it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I, you know, just as she's a magical person, um, she was a magical person, and and you see why. Everything about her life, her early years, the person that she became. Um, yeah, I just I have so much respect for her. I have not finished the book. I'm like seven chap, six chapters in, I think, right now. I've been very busy, so uh-huh. I've not been able to finish it. But I will. I will certainly finish it. Um, because it's worth reading, and I just yeah, it was great to get it. I got an advanced copy of it like about a week before it was it was put out. So very cool. Very cool. Well, returning to Deimos uh, just a bit, uh, I just was curious. Sure. Would you say that your favorite storylines of Deimos were the ones you submitted for the reel? That was your favorite time as the character. Oh yeah, without question. Yeah, without question. Um, yeah, I. You know, it was really nice. I when I was when I first came on the show, I just loved how they kept developing the character. They kept finding more and more colors to him and more dimensions. Um, you know, and it, I it's all it really always starts with a great backstory and and Josh and Beth came up with a wonderful wonderful backstory for Demos. Um, that made sense, you know, and that even the audience after, you know, after getting over the fact of Maggie falling down the stairs, they could at least, <laughs> you know, empathize with his desire to get revenge against his brother for what he did. You know, once the story came out, you know, I understood that Maggie is sort of a hallowed character. And it was like, once that happened, people were, people were like, oh, I can't stand him. I can't believe what he did to her. It was an unintentional consequence. It wasn't, it, he didn't intend for her to fall down the stairs. But, you know, he was putting his brother to the test just like he was causing his brother to make a, a decision, a choice between love and power. And that's what he had done, you know. Um, his brother didn't give him that choice 30 years ago. So, anyway, but that, you know, not to rehash that one, relitigate that one. But it was kind of funny that everybody <laughs> was freaking out because of Maggie. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is a tough one to give it out of. But once the story came out and they started, the audience started seeing what had happened and then all of a sudden saw the turn that was happening with Deimos after the river and realizing he almost died. The scenes with Chloe were so important um, because everything, he's, he, was, he was questioning his, his, himself and his direction, the path of his life. Um, for 30 years, he had been guided totally, entirely on seeking revenge on wanting revenge against his brother and rightfully so i mean 30 years of his life was denied he was denied a family denied love he was denied you know the the pleasures and joys of freedom and life and uh, you know so he these are things that he had yearned for long for so i could understand why he would be that way played it they, they, they wrote it beautifully um, so I would say without question, that was my favorite time working the character. And I would, I had hoped that it would continue in that direction. Unfortunately, it did not. Um, and you know, for reasons that are obvious, um, you know, writers changed and they took it in a very different direction from the day they first started, which was, that was sad to see on, unfortunately, I, I mean, I can't, I'm just being honest with you I, as an actor, mm-hmm. it, Took, it, it took a very a multi-dimensional character that was exciting and fun to play that kept the audience on their toes and you know and it's okay to go back and forth between loving or like questioning whether you like a character I don't mind that um, but or even getting the audience to empathize you with you for things that you're doing that are rather nefarious that's great to be able to get to that place but then to take it and turn it into a sort of a stock one-dimensional villain that's not as fun to play and um you know i i really loved the depth of the character and i was sorry to see them sort of be away from that sadly yeah well as a viewer i totally agree with you i i I always enjoyed deimos in the beginning because 
you knew what, where, even when, you know, you'd find out these horrible things that had happened, you knew where he was coming from. And they kind of, yeah, right. I agree with you. As the head writers changed, they lost sight of that. Now it's just, you know, Deimos the monster, you know. And it's just like where, right. you know, before we all knew who he was, where he came from, how he'd been messed over by Victor. And uh, right. the events that led yeah, to you know, where I, he is, so I told totally you. And I and I honestly, this is the thing that producers on the show that were also really, um, they were integral in the development of the character with me, and um, I I valued their 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 view, their opinions of the character, and I had wonderful conversations with them as well during the development, the creation of the character, and I valued their notes because they were right on with it. You know, we were all in sync with each other, and. Um, you know, it became obvious to all of us. I said that to one of the producers when it first started. I saw the change. I said, what's going on? It's like this is becoming really dark, and it's sort of one-dimensional now. He's, we're losing the heart of the character. And I, what I loved about Deimos was that with the darkness that you had, he was also, at his core, a true romantic he was um, that was who he was and even showed in the music he played which was romantic classical <laughs> music he had that at his core he wanted the he wanted to experience true family that's why he family after the river and invited them in and wanted to be a part of that that's what he had been denied for 30 years and and i always knew because i love the fact that this is great it's also a great backstory a uh, part of the backstory is that Deimos was the bastard son he was the son that, that the Kiriakis, my brother and the other family members, that my father didn't want to acknowledge because he was the son from another mother. And I always believed that he was kind of like the Jon Snow. If you watch Game of Thrones, he was the Jon Snow of the family. Um, so he had always been denied, even as a kid growing up. I This is for me. No, it was never in the story. But I believe that the one person that, that met, meant the most to him would be his mother because she would affirm for him from a young age, don't ever forget, you are Kidiakis no matter whatever anybody says. So I believe that in his life, once he invited the family into his life and was open to them being a part of it and, and wanting to have that experience, that Maggie was becoming that for him, what his mother was for him. Um, but, you know, it's just it's hard because they, they didn't, they lost sight of that, of the characters, the romanticism of him, the depth of the character, and that was really sad to see. That was sad. So, but that, what are you going to do? That happens sometimes. What are you going to do? Right. Well, um, and also, sadly, we you know we know through the news, soap opera digest and stuff that the character of Deimos is going to be off the canvas. So, can you tell us anything about uh, future projects that you're involved with? If you're at liberty to say anything. Well, I'm. I'm actually. I've been. I've had several auditions over the last couple of months. I had two yesterday that went really well. Um, you know, I've had mm-hmm. yeah, really good responses from things. So we're still waiting to find out about some. And um, so yeah, that's basically it right now. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I just, honestly, I'd be surprised if I didn't get one of the one of them that I went up for yesterday because they both went really well. And but you never know. I mean, I've been surprised before, so you never know. This is a tough one. <laughs> um, but I'm, but I'm happy right. though. I feel really in the groove with with the auditions. I feel great. I'm, I've been feeling really good about the, myself, my work that I'm putting out there, and so it's exciting, you know. And wait to see what happens. And there's always a possibility. Maybe I'll get fortunate enough to get another job on another show. You know, you never know. I've you know I've been in this medium for many years and worked with some really wonderful people in front of the camera and behind the camera. So um, you just never know. So we'll see. Everybody has been so supportive of of my work, and um, especially when the news came out about me leaving the show, it was just very touching. I was very moved by it. And um, but I, I'm just so grateful to everybody for their support. Everybody's been so wonderful. And I it's it, – it was a shame for me because I saw so much potential in Deimos, and I, I likened the character, the, the 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 potential in the character to, even like my character Lujak on Guiding Light, and also David Hayward on on All My Children. Um, they were great substantive characters, you know, and I just loved playing them. Um, and I really did love playing Deimos, and it was sad. I, I was truly saddened by that that it was that I was leaving the show, and I it was saddened. I was saddened by the the course that the character had taken as well, um, because of that. 
you know, because of the things that we had already discussed. And I, it, it was, it is what it is, you know, it's sort of like mourning, mourning, mourning the character, you know? Um, and I still am sad by it because I loved, I loved it. I loved, it's rare that you get to go to a, a job where you truly love working with everybody that you're working with. And that's the environment that it was there for me. Um, so it was, it was very special. So, but I'm grateful to all the fans for their support. They've been fantastic. And I'm, I, I will be forever grateful to them. I just want everybody to know that. So thank you. Coming up next in this Daytime Emmy nomination series will be interviews with Gina Tognoni and Stacey Heideck from The Young, The Restless, and Kate Manzi from Days of Our Lives. The Daytime Emmy ceremony will take place on April 30th at the Pasadena Civic Auditorium in Los Angeles. To find out about all future Outtake shows, visit my website at outtakesinterviews.com. Follow me on Twitter as Laurie's Outtakes. Like my Facebook page on Outtakes Interviews on Blog Talk Radio. And I just recently started posting on Instagram this Outtakes Interviews, so you can find me there as well. So see you there. And until next time.